Every story you hear about a corrupt, abusive police officer tends to get written off just as one bad apple. But the truth is that we have an epidemic in our law enforcement agencies that few people can comprehend. But a new group called the Plainview Project has started tracking these police officers. And I have Farron Cousins from the Trial Lawyer magazine to talk about that. Farron, you've done plenty of stories on this for uh, the National Trial Lawyers magazine. These stories, uh, they, we're not seeing as many, we're not hearing about as many as we heard. It was like a rash of yeah. these stories that came out where they were more than just more than just social media problems. I mean, we were people getting killed from police officers that never should have been wearing a uniform. I look at this story and, you know, having been a prosecutor, I can tell you, this is not typical of most police officers. It just isn't. But the numbers seem to point that we got a big problem. Tell, tell me about this Plainview project and, and what's happening here. Well, what the Plainview project is doing, which I, I think is, you know, great work, is they're going through social media groups, you know, these private uh, message boards that these police officers and, and other law enforcement officials are using. And what they're finding is that there is a lot, you know, a lot more than people should be comfortable with of blatant racism, uh, sex, sexism, Islamophobia, all kinds of things that, that show that some of these officers involved in this, which right now they have thousands, are, are clearly biased. You know, they don't like this group of people, they don't like this gender, they don't like this religion. And that obviously is going to present a massive problem for this person whose job it is to go out there and, and uphold the law. And do and, a good job. Right. And, and it's nearly impossible. So the Plainview Project came along and was founded to, to try to keep track of this and to alert these uh, police departments that, hey, you have a lot of people in your department that are making these comments. Here they are. We've, we've printed them out. We've sent them to you. Mm. you. You need to address this and figure out how to make things better. This isn't about shaming the officers or exposing them. This is about trying to get the police departments themselves to work on these people, work with these people, or if necessary, remove get these people from the line yeah, of duty. Yeah, I think you have to put it in context. Uh, first of all, Lornette Turnbull did this great article. Um, and, and in this article, it talks about one situation where they're, they, this is a very typical thing what, that I'm about to read. Uh, there was a meme of a police uh, police dog and uh, trying to run after something. And the meme came from a police officer says, I hope you run. He likes fast food. Now, that's the least offensive of all of these. Right. If you see this article, it's just in word everywhere. It's uh, it's almost their equal, uh, whether it's Latino. It's as I read this, it's almost as if the it's almost as if the the hatred has turned as much to Latinos as it has African Americans, and and we're seeing in Philadelphia, 72 officers actually reassigned. Now, that bothers me in itself. Yeah. Reassigned. Talk about that a little bit. Right, right. Well, we just saw in uh, Philadelphia, which was a result of what the Plainview Project is working on, is they removed 72 officers from the streets. Unfortunately, these 72 officers whose comments uh, that were actually mentioned in a different article, horrendous. They're just on desk duty. So they're still employed. They're still, you know, working in law enforcement. And eventually, yes, they're going to find their way back onto the streets where they're going to be armed with their guns and their tasers and their mace and whatever it is. This is all just a temporary band-aid that these police departments typically engage in to say, OK, look, this is a bad person. We're, we're sending them on a paid vacation for a while. We're putting them on desk duty. As soon as the public stops looking. All right. Go on, get back in your vehicle, get on uh, yeah, the field. I, lo I love this. In St. Louis, there was a prosecutor who said, you know what? I'm there. She, she had a list of 22 officers. And she says, in these 22 officers, I'm going to stop bringing charges where that officer makes the case. I'm going to stop allowing warrants to be issued where that officer is involved. I'm going to stop letting that officer testify as a witness because these particular 22 officers has, have this history of, of these types of social media maps. Now, you see the problem. The, the problem is the whole, the, uh, the whole system just crumbles on itself. Right. You know, here you got a prosecutor that says, I, I, it's, I, I, I'm not going to use these people because I don't believe them, because they're racist, because it doesn't make any difference whether they're Latino, African-American, white, 
you know, whatever it is, these people show really bad history. And so, you know, I, I saw an article uh, not long ago where they were, they're trying to defend this on a free speech issue. That is a loser. There is no free speech here. This is not a free speech argument. You can't just willy-nilly say what you want to say in a setting like this.